Welcome back. So I'm gonna go over the basics of violin posture. The best way to hold it when you're not playing is under your right arm with your arm behind the bridge. Again, you don't wanna crush that bridge. And your left arm is now free to do everything else. Your bow is hanging from your pointer finger of your right hand. So everything is over here and your left hand is free. So I'm gonna put my bow down to talk about the left hand. So you wanna make sure that your feet are underneath your shoulders and your knees are relaxed and not locked. And your feet are open, your toes are open, not parallel. And then you're gonna put your hand on the bottom shoulder, not the top shoulder, but the bottom shoulder. And then you're gonna put your violin just above your shoulder your left shoulder, shave off your ear and drop it onto your shoulder. Turn your nose to the scroll so you're looking at it and drop your head on the chin rest. Now I told you before that I prefer to call it a jaw rest and the reason is if you actually turn it to be a chin rest, you can see that I'm pulling in my neck and that's very uncomfortable. So it's really more of a jaw rest than an actual chin rest. So again, you're gonna turn your nose, drop your head, and let go. You need to find that sweet spot where your violin can balance on your shoulder and your head can hold it comfortably. So in a first lesson, we would do this probably 10 times with me helping the student, modeling while the student copies, and then seeing how long the student can hold the violin without getting tired or scared that they're gonna drop it. And it can take weeks, honestly, a repetition to get the hang of getting it all the way on the shoulder. You don't want it on your chest. That doesn't help. That's in the wrong angle for everything, the way it's set up. You'll see people play like that, but you won't see classical musicians play like that. They might come down a little bit because at the end of the day, we all kind of settle into a personal posture, but you'll never see them all the way on their chest and you won't see them shooting at the ground or shooting in the air. So you want the violin to look like a tabletop, pretty much at a 90 degree angle to your body with your head holding comfortably. Don't clamp down on it. If you push too hard, your violin's gonna pop up and you're gonna hurt yourself. So let's do it one more time. Make sure that you're using the bottom shoulder, not the neck, you just don't have that much control. So you can use the bottom shoulder or you can put it across the fingerboard like that and drop it from above onto your shoulder. Turn your nose to the scroll, drop your head and no hands. Okay, and that's the foundation. If that's not comfortable, then everything else is hard. But your hand ultimately has to be free to move. So you cannot rely on your hand holding the instrument. So you really need to learn to trust this before we do this. Otherwise you will hold and you will grab and then you'll be very limited in what you can do here and it will hurt and you'll get tired and you'll have a whole bunch of problems. So it's worth it to spend a lot of repetitions getting super comfortable and getting so that you really trust yourself to hold the violin and you don't feel like it's gonna drop. Now for the bow. The bow is what makes the violin so beautiful in its tone, but it's also what makes the violin so challenging. Bowed string instruments are a whole nother ball game from the ones that are plucked. So a lot of people who played guitar or play mandolin or banjo, they pick up a string instrument with a bow and they think, oh, I've played a string instrument. How hard can it be? But the bow is a real game changer. So the way we're gonna learn the bow is we're gonna hold it in our left hand so that the frog is in front of our right hand. So take a second and get yourself oriented. I'm backwards just like when I was putting the violin up, I would backwards to you. 
So now that you're oriented, make sure that your hair is looking at the floor and you're not touching the hair with your hand because you don't want to get it dirty. And then you're going to take your right hand right over the frog and as relaxed as possible, you're just going to drop it. Just let it hang like you're sleeping and it's hanging over the edge of the bed. So you see my hand, my fingers are relaxed, my thumb is down, my pinky's just hanging out. I'm not doing anything and I'm certainly not holding it. My left hand is holding it. I'm just dropped on it, relaxed with dead weight. My arm is slightly down from it, kind of in the same way that if I was gonna take a drink of water, I wouldn't pop my elbow up like that. I would just take a drink of water with my elbow slightly below my hand. So in the same way, you want your elbow slightly below your hand. So now that you've got your nice relaxed hand and you can really feel the bow be beneath you, just in front, or sorry, the bow is just in front of your middle knuckle. Right, I'm not, I'm not under the knuckle. I'm certainly not past it. So I'm right about at those middle knuckles. And from here, I'm gonna put my thumb on the clip with a big bump, so it's really oriented towards it, the tip of my thumb, almost like it was a bench and the bow came and sat on the bench. And then I'm gonna pop my pinky up to the top of the bow, not on the side, not around, that's what the cellists do, right on top. So don't let go or anything, just shake out, now that you've seen it once, and do it again. Drop your hand, add your thumb, add your pinky, and adjust. You don't want these guys hanging around, but they do come all the way to the bottom of the frog. Do not worry about that dot. Typically, the ring finger will go somewhere around it, but that has a lot to do with the size of your hand and how it relates to the frog. Certainly, you don't want it above. Right, the only finger that sits on the stick is the pinky. Okay, so now that you've fussed with it and adjusted it, check your elbow and let go and shake out again. Okay, third time's the charm. Come up and drop it. Add your pinky and your thumb. Check your wrist and your elbow. Now, let go with your left hand. Yikes! I bet it fell. Because your pinky now has to balance the weight of that bow and your thumb is holding it up and you probably weren't ready for that so let's shake out come back relax don't take it yet just get that really relaxed heavy feeling add your thumb and your pinky check these I call these fingers the huggers because they kind of hug into the frog this one should really not be doing anything at this point just hanging out okay ready to let go there you go, that's better. You feel that pinky working? It probably did that by now, so we'll just shake out and do it again. Flop, add your pinky and your thumb, check yourself, and then let go. So again, just like the left hand, or the putting the violin up, it takes a lot of repetition and you're gonna have to build up a lot of pinky strength to make this work. And you're not gonna have bow control when you try to play unless you've got your pinky and your thumb in place. Now, if that feels comfortable to you, go ahead and stick with this bow hold for a while. If it feels uncomfortable to you, you might wanna try putting your thumb inside. This is the ultimate way we all hold the bow but it feels a little bit more like fine motor skills and it can be uh, very uh, distracting for a beginner. This can feel more secure and you can really feel that pinky and the thumb and what they're doing. So if that's not comfortable for you though, put your thumb inside right up against the frog. Again, it's still gonna be curved like it's a bench and the bow comes along and sits on the bench and it's gonna be half on the stick and half on the frog. It's not gonna be inside the frog because that can't do anything. It needs to communicate with the stick. So if it's inside the frog, it can't talk to the stick. 
So you're gonna put it right there in the corner. And then you're still gonna drop your fingers and place your pinky. So you can try that way and see if it feels better to you. But if it might make it harder actually for some people. So if it makes it harder, just put it on the outside on the clip and keep it there. And then I'll bring it up again later when it's appropriate to try again, when you've had enough experience and you feel confident enough with the beginning bowl hold. Okay, so when you've made about a thousand bowl holds, it's gonna start to feel comfortable and something that you can trust. It is a little easier in a way when we go to play because the violin does hold the bow up somewhat. The bow can rest on it, but it doesn't let your bow hold off the hook because we also frequently take the bow off the string and your bow hold has to be able to hold it in the air, whether we're going up or down. Right? And it still has to communicate with the stick in order to tell the stick what kind of sound we make. And the elbow has to communicate, the wrist, everything comes through the bow hold to make the sound. So again, this is the most important foundational thing you can do besides getting that tabletop violin that you trust so that as you start to play you feel confident and comfortable and you don't have too many things to think about every step brings its own new things to think about so you really want to make sure that you're comfortable with the old step before you go on if you want to get a taste of it, you can put your bow on your left shoulder as though it was playing the violin. And you can try playing a down bow and an up bow. So the down bow goes towards the floor and the up bow goes up. I wouldn't try to use big bows because those are hard to control, but just little bows, just to kind of get the feeling of that. You'll notice that I'm opening my elbow. So my bow is all, everything is over here on my left side, which is a little challenging. We're actually wired that our right hand wants to stay on the right side of our body and our left hand wants to stay on the left side of our body. So when we're bowing, we have to cross that midline to our bodies and the right hand has to stay on the left side. And there's just a really big biological pull that it wants to go over here to the right side. And then that means you're opening your shoulder instead of your elbow. So as you're playing on your shoulder over here, make sure you're opening your elbow, make sure that your elbow is nice and relaxed. It does ultimately move up and down, but we don't need to worry about that now. We just want to get that motion, stay relaxed, because you you're not making any sound, so you don't have to worry about it. Just stay relaxed, try to stay constant, so that that friction between your bow hair and your shoulder is staying the same and it's not bouncing. If it's bouncing, you're too tight. You're squeezing. So you gotta relax and just go down and up. And when your bow hold falls apart, put it back in your left hand, shake it out and find it again. Go to your shoulder and just practice that way. The rosin will wash out of your clothes, no big deal. Okay, so that is your basic violin and bow. Now I'm gonna go back to the violin because you might wanna get some materials before our next segment. One of the things that makes the guitar and the other uh, string instruments a little easier is that they have frets. You might remember seeing the bars that go across the fingerboard. And those frets show the players where to put their fingers for the notes. On the bowed instruments, we don't have frets. And that makes the process of learning to play in tune and learning where your fingers go really long and tedious. So there are teachers that swear that you need to learn that way. I am not one of them. So you can get fingerboard tape or you can use um, like a automo automobile tape do not use scotch tape. Do not use stickers. Stickers are round and they take up too much space. So you're gonna to wanna to get that tuner and you're gonna to wanna to get a little piece of tape and you're gonna slide it in between the fingerboard and the string. 
until you get to the end of your violin. And then you're gonna put it down so it sticks to the fingerboard, but don't put the ends down yet because you don't know if you're in the right place. Then go to your tuner. That's my A. I'm gonna find a B and I'm gonna put my finger on the second string, that A string, and kind of pluck it until it matches that sound as best I can. You can always refine it later, or if you have a violin shop, or if you're renting your instrument, they might be able to put the tapes on for you, okay? And then you're gonna repeat the process. You can choose, you can either do one for all three fingers, in which case that first one is your B, and then you're gonna put the tuner on the note C sharp. You just keep pushing that button until it says C sharp. And then the third one is gonna be for the note D. I don't like to put three for my students. I like to put one and three, but since you're working by yourself, it might be easier to do two and three and then take off the two as you start to get comfortable with that. So you're gonna have at least two tapes on your violin, one for B and one for D, and maybe one for C sharp. And the one for C sharp, you see how close my fingers are? That's why I don't bother with one for C sharp because if you know where D is, C sharp is just gonna touch. That's called a half step and they touch each other. So you would put your C sharp finger slightly behind that D marker like that. But if you don't, trust that yet and you just want to spell everything out then put that C sharp marker and that D marker so then you have three don't even worry about four we're not going to get to four for a long time and we have a lot to learn about how to move the hand before we do so just don't worry about four just one two and three so if you need to get finger tape go ahead and go do that while you're learning your tabletop violin and your bow hole and then I'll see you in the next video for the left hand setup. Happy practicing.